Welcome to the course in Plasma Physics and Applications. In the next two modules, we will consider electrical breakdown in low pressure gases. As an example, we will consider a communication satellite orbiting the Earth, which is powered by photovoltaic solar panels. Now, the communication satellite is aimed at the ground, and the photovoltaic solar panels are aimed at the Sun. And therefore, there has to be some relative rotation which is guaranteed by a slippering assembly. Now in this example of breakdown, this is an application where we want to design the slippering assembly to avoid electrical breakdown. And therefore, we have to consider the physics of electrical breakdown in low pressure gases. In this course, we will first consider background ionization, and then the first and second Townsend coefficients and then we will come to the breakdown criterion in gases. As an example, we will take a vacuum vessel here with electrodes of a few centimetres dimensions and the vessel is filled with argon to a pressure of a few millibars. We will apply a DC voltage between a cathode and the anode and the question is, does a plasma form immediately? That is, how does the plasma start, or where does the first electron come from to start the plasma? The answer to this is that there is always background radiation on Earth coming from cosmic rays or radioactivity in the environment. These rays or radioactivity can cause photoemission from the cathode or photoionization in the gas, and these release electrons which travel in the electric field from the cathode to the anode. Let's say that the photoemission creates N0 dot charges per second and when all of these charges are collected at the anode then we have a saturation current that is the saturation current is equal to the rate of production of all electrons times the electronic charge. This current is generally very small of the order of picoamps and this situation occurs for voltages up to say 10 volts. Now this discharge is too weak to be visible. It depends only on an external source. This is not a self-sustaining plasma. Now if we now increase the voltage still further, then the electron impact on atoms will eventually lead to ionization, something considered in the previous module, where each electron will therefore give rise to two electrons and the ion of the original atom. The discharge current will now increase strongly above the saturation current because each electron can create an avalanche of electron ion pairs as we see schematically in this diagram where the each electron arriving strikes an atom uh, creating therefore two electrons which are accelerated in the electric field this repeats causing an avalanche to the anode. This was considered by Townsend in the year uh, 1900. Uh, Townsend introduced something called the first ionization coefficient which he defined as alpha the number of ionizing collisions per electron per unit length along the electric field. Now let's look at the number of electrons arriving at the anode due to the avalanche phenomenon of electrons coming from the cathode. If n dot is the rate of electrons arriving at position x, then by definition of alpha, the increase in the rate of electrons crossing x plus dx is n dot times alpha dx, which is the increase of number of electrons due to ionization in the slice dx. We integrate this from the cathode to the plane at x, and if alpha is independent of x, then we find that the rate of electrons crossing x increases with the exponential of x. And therefore, the current leaving the anode, since electrons have negative charge, this current leaving the anode is the number of electrons leaving the cathode times the charge of the electrons times the exponential of alpha d. And therefore, the current is I0 e to the alpha d 
where I0 is the saturation current from the previous slide. This strong increase in current is called the avalanche effect. Don't forget that every electron ionizing event creates positive ions which travel back in the opposite direction. Therefore you can convince yourself that the current crossing any plane is everywhere the same by continuity of current. So the number of electrons arriving at the anode is n0 dot e to the alpha d. There are no positive ions leaving the anode. So this, the minus e times this is the current arriving here. The positive ions travel back and the sum total of current arriving at the cathode is also I0 e to the alpha d. And this current circulates also in the external circuit. So if we go back to our current voltage graph, we find that beyond several volts, beyond the saturation current, we enter the Townsend discharge regime uh, defined by alpha, where the current is increasing exponentially with distance. Now if we look again at the cathode and the anode, we consider what happens when the ions themselves arrive back at the cathode. So we have a start electron, this causes an ionizing event, the ion goes back to the cathode and the avalanche continues towards the anode. All the subsequent ions arrive back at the cathode. All the ions are neutralized there but some of them, when they strike the cathode, can cause secondary electron emission, for example, by the Auger effect. And these secondary electrons can create further avalanches. The secondary emission events are quite rare. So now we want to consider what the current is in the presence of secondary emission. Between the electrodes, the current can increase even more strongly due to the secondary emission effect. The number of electrons emitted per incident ion is small of the order of 10 to the minus 2 and the probability 10 to the minus 2, this probability depends on the type of gas, that is the type of ion arriving on the cathode and the type of material that the cathode is made of. So the question is, what is the current when secondary emission is included? The initial photo emission current from the cathode undergoes avalanche as it arrives at the anode. All the ions created during the avalanche drift back to the cathode and a fraction gamma of these ions creates secondary electrons which themselves avalanche towards the anode giving this number of electrons arriving at the anode giving rise also to this number of ar ions arriving back at the cathode whose fraction gamma gives another secondary emission source which travels with avalanche to the anode, etc. So we can see that we have here a geometric series with a, a constant value I0 e to the alpha d multiplied by a factor gamma e to the alpha d minus 1. This is the ratio between successive avalanches. The sum of a geometric series is the constant divided by 1 minus the ratio and therefore when secondary emission is included we find that the sum of the infinite series of all the avalanches gives this current at the anode. So now we see the Townsend discharge current due to the first Townsend coefficient and the second Townsend coefficient increases the current even more strongly this current still depends on the external source I0. But note that the Townsend current will become theoretically infinite as the denominator here tends to zero. This then is the Townsend criterion for breakdown in gases between parallel electrodes. That is that one minus the ratio equals zero. In this case, the gas breaks down and becomes a self-sustaining discharge. That is, that the discharge is independent of the external source. For this condition, gamma e to the alpha d equals gamma plus 1, which is approximately equal to 1. Physically, this simply means that the number of secondary electrons created per primary electron is at least equal to 1. 
That is, every electron from the cathode creates another to replace it. And now we have our full current voltage diagram where the saturation current undergoes avalanche and secondary emission to become a self-sustaining plasma instead of a non-self-sustaining discharge. When breakdown occurs between parallel conducting electrodes, this can cause an arc whose current is limited only by the impedance of the external circuit. As we can see in these photographs here, where the current limit in the external circuit was increased between each different experiment. So as the current limit becomes very high, we can get a catastrophic melting of components and the complete destruction of the uh, electrodes. So if the supply is maintained, for example, by a solar panel, then catastrophic arcing, arcing could destroy a slip ring in a satellite. This is not good, especially in orbit, where the possibility of repair is very small. So to summarize this module, we've considered the background ionization current. We've seen how ionization leads to an avalanche which increases the current. We've seen that secondary emission increases the current still further. And then we arrive at a point where we have breakdown, where the breakdown criterion is given by gamma e to the alpha d equals gamma plus one.